Hi, my name is Neil Blevins, and this is part two of a tutorial discussing how to do edge wear on surfaces inside of 3ds Max. Um, if you haven't seen part one, uh, go check it out on my YouTube channel. And uh, in part one, I discuss a technique for um, basically applying a curvature uh, shader using a script that I wrote to this object. And then after that, using the uh, warp texture plugin in order to warp that texture and get uh, these nice uh, edge wear patterns around the edges. So in this one, I have two alternate techniques that are very similar to do basically the same visual thing. And I just wanted to point out these uh, other techniques to you in case uh, they're more appropriate for the kind of work you want to do. So the first technique I'm going to show you is very similar to the last one except instead of using the Warp Texture plugin, uh, in case you don't want to use that plugin, like maybe um, you're using a version of Max that uh, doesn't have that plugin available for it, or you just don't like using third-party plugins, um, this technique uses the baked curvature that I baked in here using my script, but then instead of using the Warp, what it does is it blends between uh, the noise and the original lower-level texture. So if you look here, um, this is very similar to the last one. We're going to blend between a metal and a paint uh, shader. And then in the mask, uh, instead of having a warp texture in here, instead we have a regular mix. And then inside the mix, we put two things. Um, first of all, we put that noise uh, up here, which is very similar to the last noise that I showed you. Um, so the noise, uh, here's the size. It's a little bit clamped. And then down in the mix amount, we put our vertex color. So this is the vertex color map which is grabbing the vertex color uh, that I baked in. Then it goes into an output map and you can see down at the bottom here I enabled color map and I clamped this a little bit so you're going to get a result that's a little more purely black and white as opposed to gray. And then once that goes in the mix amount you then go into the output of this map and you clamp this like crazy. So you can see here that I've clamped it really really hard at the end here. And the result of doing this is results that look very similar. So let's just render this here. And there you go. So this gets you a very similar result to what you had uh, using the other technique, except this time using no plugins. So this is only using the base stuff that's inside of 3ds Max um, and my, my script, but no plugins that need to be recompiled or anything like that. So it does a, a job that's pretty similar to um, the job that uh, the, the warp texture does. Now the second technique I'm going to show you does use the plugin, and it's a, a new plugin that got released by Boomer Labs, and it's an actual curvature shader. So you don't have to necessarily use the um, baked-in curvature map on your surface anymore. You can actually use the shader to do it, and here it is right here. So very, very similar idea. If you go up to the top here, you got your metal and your paint. And um, here, let me just uh, assign this. And you have your, your metal, metal, your paint, and you have your mask. And then inside of your mask, you have a mix, which is uh, mixing between black and white. And in the mix amount is the curvature shader. And inside of this curvature map, you can see there's a lot of options in here. I'm only going to use a few of these, but it has lots of options uh, to do lots of other things if you want to give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to set concave to black. Uh, flat areas will be white and convex will be again black. I increase the gain a lot and the K factor and this just uh, clamps the edges basically. So if I were to render this you can see it does exactly what my script does except it's not baking um, to the object itself. It's doing it all uh, rendering in real time. Now, of course, this is too clean. This is just the edge version. And uh, the way you get the distortion in here is it has a built-in distortion field, which is down here. So if I turn on distortion, and uh, I have the amount of 0.3, and then inside of here is a, um, a noise, just like those noises I used in all the other examples. So it's a little bit clamped and uh, set to fractal with, um, in this case, a size of 8. And now if I render this, you can see I get again very very similar results. So the advantages of using the uh, Boomer Lab plugin um, is number one there's no baking step necessary uh, so you don't have to write out the curve data, uh, curvature data to the vertex colors 
and um, editing your geometry doesn't mess up your uh, vertex map since all these calculations are done in real time if you make an edit to your geometry it'll just do the right thing as opposed to having to rebake now the um, disadvantages of the technique is that uh, this map doesn't work in mental ray uh, so if you're using mental ray as the renderer you intend to use you can't use it um, the curve map doesn't work with V-Ray RT although hopefully that will be changed soon and also that you have to uh, buy the plugin. But personally, I think the plugin is really, really, really useful. So, um, you know, it's not that expensive. I would personally go out and, uh, and give it a buy. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, please visit my website, uh, neilblevins.com, and click on CG Education for more tutorials or visit um, the YouTube channel for more video tutorials. And uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, and that will let you know anytime I post new tutorials in the future. Thank you very much.